Welcome back to the foundry. Today we're back out in the shop working on the oil rig. Now the shop's a little messy but that's because it's a working shop. If you ever see a spotless shop you know it's not a working shop unless maybe you're in a food processing plant. So I'm building a downhole tool for the oil rig and uh, Got it up here in the clean room. And what I'm building is what I call a downhole weight. <clears throat> so uh, this piece, when I'm done with it, is going to be about 30 inches long and it's going to weigh about 100 pounds. And it's more than a weight, it's actually a multi tool. There's some bits that screw in here. I'll show you that in a second. So I'll answer the first question right off the bat, and that is why in the world would you want to send a weight down an oil well? Well, you got to think about what it is I'm doing. So I primarily operate on wells that have been abandoned or offline for a number of years. Over the course of time, especially if the well is not capped at the top, it's been exposed to the elements or people throwing junk down the well. I've seen two by fours, beer cans, small animals, what have you. So before I send my high dollar bucket down that well, I want to make sure there's not any obstructions in it that can hang up my bucket. And oftentimes, even if there's no obstructions, just a well that has been exposed to the elements that has oil in it will form a crust at the fluid level because sand and dirt comes down the well mixes with the oil, it forms a crust, I gotta be able to break through that crust before I start to operate my machine. So there's a couple of attachments that I'm gonna make to go on this weight to do more than just break up obstructions. The first tool is a brush attachment. So the weight will push this brush down the casing. I use different size brushes for different size casings. And what it does is it cleans and scrubs the casing of scale or buildup or anything that will hamper the operation of my bucket or expose it to unnecessary wear. The second tool is a retrieval tool. So a retrieval tool retrieves things that are down on the bottom of the well. Uh, most importantly, it will retrieve your bucket, hopefully, if you have a catastrophic failure and the rope on your rig breaks. So what happens when the rope breaks is the bucket shoots down the well like a bullet. It'll smack into the fluid level or the bottom like a Casey Jones locomotive. The rope will bunch up around the top of it, coil up to a certain extent. So you need something that can grab hold of the rope to retrieve your bucket. And what I'm gonna build is this rod. I'm gonna weld some hooks onto it from small to large. It'll screw onto here. When I send this down, the brush will bunch up the rope around the hooks, in theory, and tangle up in those hooks, to give you the ability to retrieve your bucket. So why does this need to be around 30 inches? Well, the machine works above the wellhead, and you have a small amount of space to attach your tools. So 30 inches seems to work pretty well. Why does it need to weigh 100 pounds? Well, it needs to have a significant amount of weight to break up obstructions, but also the machine runs on PLC controllers that are calibrated to the weight of the bucket. The bucket weighs about 100 pounds. So in order to run the machine in automatic mode, your weight needs to be similar to the weight of your bucket so the machine thinks the bucket is on the line and you can send it down automatically. And that will save you from having to run it in manual mode 
where you have to stand there and hold your thumb on a button for the amount of time that it takes this thing to go to two or three thousand feet. That could be 20, 30 minutes or more. Well, who wants to do that? I want to be able to push a button, send the machine down automatically to where I can step back and watch things and make sure everything's going smoothly. So how am I going to make a 30 inch piece of Schedule 43 inch pipe weigh 100 pounds? Well, the only answer I could come up with is to fill it full of lead. And right here we have a large lead ingot that I'm about to weigh. I know it's extremely heavy. It's a lot heavier than it looks. Lead's very deceiving. And so I'm going to weigh it and see exactly how much it weighs and how much I need to pour into my downhole weight. Sitting next to it here is a homemade crucible. And so I'll cut pieces off of this ingot, put it in the crucible, heat the crucible with a torch until the lead is liquid, and then I'll pour it down the weight. So, looks like this thing weighs 113 pounds, about 114 close to it. So, that should be plenty enough lead for what I need. Alright, so before I can begin melting the lead, I first need to cut it down into manageable pieces. So I tried a hacksaw, or a, uh, excuse me, a reciprocating saw, a sawzall. And with lead being as soft as it is, you want to use a coarse tooth or a, almost like a wood blade. The hacksaw type blades or metal blades will just clog up. So I tried that and it was not cutting it very well for whatever reason. I think the, the lead I have is not the softest. Apparently there's different grades. Eh, I don't know what that is. We'll just ignore that. So, coming over to my buddy shop across the street, he's got uh, he's got some power tools that may be of use. So I saw this bandsaw, but it's got a really fine blade. I needed something a little thicker, or uh, excuse me, a little more coarse. So he told me about a machine he's got back here. There ain't nobody here. And uh, I've never run the machine. In fact, this may be the first one I've ever seen. So I'm going to have to figure out how it works. But uh, basically, it's a powered hacksaw. I've already carried my ingot over here, which it's not easy to move that heavy sucker around. So the lighting in here is not great. So bear with me. But I got my ingot here. This is a powered hacksaw. So I'll set the ingot in there and, and notice the blade on that thing is very coarse. So I think it'll work well. Next I'm going to go ahead and clean up this bed. Get all these chips out of it. And it appears to be a cooled saw. So I'm going to shut the coolant off because I don't want my lead getting all nasty with oil and coolant. It'll make my melting and pouring procedure a little bit more difficult. All right, let's see what it does. Let me get it going the right direction. It says that's going down. Seems to be cutting it pretty good.
probably three or four pounds right there. Maybe more than that. So I'm gonna, this is more of a manageable piece. I might go back and cut it this way also, give me some good cubes. But I think uh, I'm just gonna keep going in this fashion. So if I subtract the weight of my pipe, I figured I'm going to need about 85 pounds. And with these chunks, I've got 87, a little over 87, so that, that'll be fine. It doesn't have to be exact. And I've got my crucible up here and a rosebud tip. And now I'm going to have to figure out the best way to heat this thing. Uh, I'm just going to have to play with it and see what I can come up with. And then when I get it to liquid, I've got my pipe over here. This is the only thing I had that would hold the thing while I poured into it. This is my waste oil heater, uh, but it'll work fine for that. So let's see how it goes. And one quick thing I want to mention before I get started is I'm, I'm going to set this fan up to make sure it blows the fumes away from me. Uh, you do not want to inhale lead fumes any more than you want to inhale lead dust. Alright, I got a super professional torch holder fabricated from a child's schoolhouse chair. I'm going to start by getting this crucible as hot as I can. Then I'll set the lead in there and finish heating it. I got that crucible really hot, I just started melting from the top. I'm actually not sure if this is the best way to do it really, but it seems to be working for me. You can see there's some nails in there. Those were present in that uh, lead ingot. See, this is all the trash. If you wanted to keep it pure, this is all the trash you would have to skim out of it. But as I said before, we're not concerned about the impurities. So next, I'm going to take this over to my... If I can do it without seriously burning myself. I'm going to take this crucible over to my pipe. And we're just going to pour it in there. Make sure your pipe doesn't have moisture in it or it'll pop back. Mm -hmm. 
now I'm just going to add a couple more chunks of lead and we're going to repeat the process. All right, so got my lead poured. Everything went pretty well. Uh, let the pipe cool down. Now I carried it over to my welding buddies, Fred and Jordan. Uh, we had to do a little extra work on it toward the top, give me a place to hook my rope to. And uh, it's ready to go, so let's walk over and check it out. Yeah, my welding machine's down. I've got to fix it. So every time I need a little welding done, I come over to my buddy's shop across the street. Another buddy of mine's a good welder, so uh, he's been real helpful. And I think the weight's going to turn out a, li a little bit better than I'd hoped for, so it's always a good thing. All right, this is what we come up with. And what Fred did was come up with this nifty. So what did you do? You basically uh, notched that and then. Yes, sir. I notched it out about an inch in. Took some uh, one inch by quarter and slid it in. Then I bent it over. And uh, it worked out fairly well. And then we did this little number up here to... Then we made a hook to put the clevis on. I mean a uh, lifting hole with a piece of chain. We hooked the clevis on. Now Heck all yeah. he needs is a rope. Yeah, that's going to work out good. That's going to work out good. <laughs> yeah, I think it turned out really good. So yeah, they got me fixed up. Uh, a couple features about this thing, like this right here also doubles as a handle. Cause when this, you know, this thing's a hundred pounds. So it comes up out of a well, it's all slick with crude oil on it. I didn't want to be wrestling and dropping the thing on my foot. So I really like what he did here. Gives me a handle, a couple other things it does. Well, you notice right off the bat, it's bullet shaped. So you're not going to snag and hang up coming back up. Rope connects to this little D-ring. D-ring's rated for a thousand pounds. The most, the bucket should weigh a uh, hundred pounds empty and about 175 if it's full of oil. And then the weight here weighs another hundred. So we're looking at about 375 pounds and maybe another 50 pounds of uh, hanging rope weight. So it should hold up, should be well less than a thousand. Um, and I got a little extra in case I need to pull on it if there's a little snag but the machine the machine should shut off before i pull hard enough to break this the way it's designed a uh, couple other little things this let's see if we can see up in there you see the the lead and then i got about two inches of pipe that comes up above the lead and it makes a cup so what that'll do is it'll bring up whatever kind of fluid is down in that well so that'll kind of give me an indication. I always send this down before my bucket, not knowing whether, I know there's fluid in a well because I do a fluid test before I start, but I don't know if it's salt water or oil. So that cup will collect whatever's down in that well, give me an indication as to whether it, you know, there's actually oil in the well. And then down on this end, of course, like I said, is where we screw on tools. And right now I just got this little bolt in there. That is just to keep these threads clean when I send it down the well, because I don't always use that brush attachment and I never use the hook attachment unless of course there's a catastrophe and I lose my bucket. So let's hope I never have to use it. But uh, most of the time it'll just be this bare weight. So I want to protect the threads. Uh, there's this coupler nut and then the lead inside I also is threaded in about yay far because when I poured the lead in, I had a piece of uh, all thread in there. And then I just unscrewed the all thread and it made threads in the lead in here so I can get a, uh, my attachment threads in pretty well there. Uh, I don't want an attachment that hangs out too far. It's easier to bend, although it's, it's not really encountering anything because all the attachments are smaller diameter than the casing. So it shouldn't get bent, but I want to be able to keep it as tight. All my attachments as tight up to this bucket as possible, or this uh, weight as possible, so they don't get bent and tore up. So that's pretty much it for the weight. 
I'm going to call this prototype finished. So it's a prototype, which means it needs to be tested. So hopefully upcoming video pretty soon should have uh, uh, a good test well for us to put it on. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping it's in a location where I can have my camera equipment and show you guys exactly how the thing works. We're going to test the new weight. We're, we may have to do some minor calibration work on the PLC controller. Uh, the new bucket that's on the machine. If you see my video, my previous video that I think it's entitled, uh, I bought a small oil rig. Go check that out because that shows the rig and uh, describe a little bit about how it works. But we're going to take it out on a test well and then make sure everything runs smooth, everything works good. And I've already got a customer lined up, pretty big customer. Um, I know I've got three to five wells to work as soon as I get all my stuff lined up and all my ducks in a row, my equipment good. We're going to go hit those wells. I'm going to take you with me. Should be pretty cool to watch. So, like, subscribe. See you in the next one.